Hello, I'm here to talk to you about food safety plans. As we all know, when we look a bit at the history in terms of food safety management, we started off in the 60s where NASA developed a food safety approach based upon failure mode and effect analysis to ensure that the food was safe for the astronauts. They presented this in the early 70s and we started to see the US, the FDA and the US Department of Agriculture in getting involved in regulatory requirements in regarding food safety. In the 80s, we at Camden had our first guideline written in, the, in 1987 and we started to see the involvement of catering within this approach through Assured Safe Catering. In the 90s, and this is perhaps where we started to begin to see the fact that it was becoming much more of increasing report importance, we have Codex, the organisation that makes recommendations to regulatory authorities adopting HACCP as an approach. We had retailer standards, we had also BRC that were beginning to put the emphasis back onto the manufacturer to ensure that they're producing safe food. We had in the early 90s the, the directive which said that we actually had to think about hazards associated with products and processes but we didn't have to validate it or even to write it down. And then in the late 90s we had this term from the US, this prerequisites, the site-wide environmental and operating conditions. And if we move a little bit further forward, we, when we come into the 2000s at the turn of the century, we had a you the EU regulatory requirements 852 2004 853 and also the general food requirements we also had the introduction of an ISO standard on food safety management systems specifically designed to cover all areas of the supply chain not only the manufacturing sites but also the supply chain and into the current decade we've had a and a much more increasing importance placed upon and an additional burdens placed upon manufacturing. We've got things like food safety culture that has been introduced. We've got words like TASAP and VASAP, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. We have the advent of the Food Safety Modernization Act in the US and the impact that that is also having. And the rise of the GFSI benchmark standards, the BRC, the ISO 22, GFSSC 22000 and IFS, the International um, Features Standards. And when we look at this timeline as well and putting it into relationships of what, what, where we have covered, we've obviously got HACCP, which looked at both significant food safety hazards, but it was all about accidental contamination. And then we talked about prerequisites and we have talked for a number of years about this, the requirements of having prerequisites, these fundamental building blocks. When we look at the US regulatory requirements, they focus particularly upon allergens and hygiene or sanitation, as well as supply chain to ensure that the process and the products are safe and the process controls that they would manage perhaps through a traditional HACCP system. When we come to things like food fraud, it's all about economically motivated. And we've used the term VASAP. And we also then have, again, sort of, excuse me, in terms of the food defence, the intentional. And we talk about the threat assessments. And these have actually worked their way into the commercial standards as well. But underpinning all of this, we have a legal framework which makes it an obligation, puts an obligation upon us to ensure that the product is both safe it is a, the right quality and is actually authentic. And when we actually take all of these together, because for us to ensure that we are able to comply, because these put extra resources and burdens upon businesses to, to meet these requirements. And when we try and think about, well, where are we going with food safety? Is it just looking at HACCP? Is it looking at food fraud? Is it looking at prerequisites? Is it looking at defense? In reality, we are thinking of very much more of a holistic view, which covers not only the legal framework, but ensures that the product is safe and that we will then have and are able to protect our brand, we're able to protect the operation, and we're also able to protect the quality. This has been very much a top level overview about what food safety plans are all about and perhaps where food safety management is going in the future. 
If you would like to le learn more about this or even discuss with us any other, for any more information, then please don't hesitate to get in contact. Because what we do believe is that the food safety plan is going to be the way that we will be able to go so that we can actually not only consider the accidental contamination having effective prerequisites, but make sure that we are able to produce a product which is safe and legally compliant. Thank you very much.